Hi, that was a short hymn. I didn't know it was such a short hymn. Good morning. What a morning. We've already been busy for a while. Um, we are we are uh, Monday, March 13th. Glad you're here with us. Tomorrow's Pi Day. For those that don't know, that's March 14th or 314, because Pi is 3.14. But all right, I'll leave that joke for tomorrow. Good morning. Glad you're here with us. Uh, those those that found me, I had to take Zan to school this morning. I guess I didn't have to, but Bonnie asked that I would. And uh, Highway 3951 going north from Irma towards Tomahawk, at least up to County S, um, was uh, very slippery. Um, I, I don't know that there was uh, any kind of sand or salt on the road. I think it was just just ice, um, frozen, frozen, crushed snow. Um, they plowed. I mean, it was it was plowed all the way back on the side, so they plowed overnight, but they didn't put anything down. So, uh, yeah, it was um, it was not not a lot of fun. Um, I was just looking at at Noah here while I was waiting for you guys to gather here and. Um, I measured seven inches in our driveway this morning, uh, but that was yesterday morning. Um, the driveway got plowed uh, at about 8.30, uh, and it was already snowing, and it had been snowing for a while. So I, you know, I don't know how much got plowed off, but my congregation president is out there plowing right now, and he, he said 10 inches is um, what he has seen. Uh, and I think that's probably more right. The National Weather Service out of Green Bay um, records 8.8 .8 inches for the 12th. Um, but they don't have the 13th on there yet. And it was snowing quite a while after midnight. Um, and I'm assuming it's midnight to midnight. Uh, so I'll have to wait till tomorrow to see to see what that says. But anyway, so uh, yeah, Bonnie asked me to take Xander to school this morning, so I had to clear out our driveway as much as I could, our, our parking spots and sidewalks. I blew all that off and then took Xan to the school. School had everything cleared off. And in Tomahawk, the roads weren't bad. And then coming back from Tomahawk, the, um, the southbound lane uh, was pretty well driven. Although as I came up the Irma Hill, uh, before County J, between V and J, um, I did hear the back end go Wee! a little bit. Um, so it's it's slick. If you if you're living up here and you have to go out today, just just be a little little careful, a little cautious. Um, you don't need anybody getting hurt. Um, I did not see, knock on wood, I did not see any cars uh, in the ditch. Um, or uh, off the road or anything like that. I did get passed by a few people that I thought maybe weren't making the best choices for their life by passing, but nobody got hurt, and, and I made it home. So, um, so yeah, so we had we had our snow yesterday. Still had church everywhere, although between time change and the snow, it was, attendance was uh, a little bit a little bit south of what I would hope for. Um, but you know. That's okay. At least, at least some were there, and and the time change is going to mess everybody up for a month or so, I imagine. That you know, somebody said to me yesterday that that uh, um, they like the idea of not changing time anymore, but they don't think that daylight savings time is the place to stay. I can't argue with that. Um, it kind of depends on which end of the day you want the sun on. Um, first, personally, I'd prefer it if we just went with uh, regular time because that runs by the sun, and then when the sun is straight up, it's noon. You know, um, how are you going to have a gunfight at high noon if if high noon is uh, an hour before that or something? All right, let's um, go ahead and get into this. If you have the Lutheran Service Book, page two hundred nine. Oh, wait a minute, we got to see who's here. Got to see who's here this morning. Um, Things are a little weird today just because things are a little weird. I'm refreshing my screen here. It takes a second. And let's see here. Uh, there's me. That doesn't count. 
there's Michael. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to blame you today. Cold snap coming from the north. As long as it doesn't destroy the orange crop, that'll be okay. But you're 70 today, huh? All right. Well, that's all right. Um, we're we're um, all the way around 18 or something right now. 17 when I was taking Zan to school. I know that. That's what the truck said. Ann and Grant and Deb, good morning to you guys. Jeannie and Bob, good morning. Verna, good morning. There's Bonnie. Uh, and she says, yeah, she says 18. She said hazy sunshine. I think that's a fair statement. I, I regretted not taking my sunglasses with me. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Jerry, good morning. Renee, good morning. You like that hymn, huh? Well, all right. All right. Uh, Jill and John, good morning to you guys. Oh, and, and Jill says 11 inches. Okay. Um, I, I I wouldn't be surprised. Um, it, it did tend to be more to the south. In fact, after it had stopped here, it was still snowing uh, down Wausau and south of us. I, I expect they got more, like down by Wapaka County and things. <clears throat> I would not be surprised if they got more in the 12 to 14 inch. But we'll see what the results are tomorrow, just for fun. So, anyway, all right. If you have the Lutheran Service Book, page 295, Daily Prayer for Individuals and Families, the morning order, I have my treasury of daily prayer right here. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm this morning, Psalm 38, verses 13 through 15 and 21 through 22. Psalm 38. But I am like a deaf man, I do not hear. Like a mute man who does not open his mouth. I have become like a man who does not hear, and in whose mouth are no rebukes. But for you, O Lord, do I wait. It is you, O Lord, my God, who will answer. Do not forsake me, O Lord. O my God, be not far from me. Make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hmm. Like a deaf man who does not hear, like a mute man who does not open his mouth, I have become like a man who does not hear, and in whose mouth there is no rebuke. But I wait for you, O Lord. I, you know, I, hmm. I wish we had more of the psalm there just to kind of understand this better. But, you know, if I think about it, sometimes when you're being chastised or beaten down by something, Sometimes just stopping and, and not, not talking back um, and just ignoring, uh, pretending like you hadn't heard it. Sometimes that can be a, a good way of handling uh, an attack. Um, and so, you know, when, when the Lord is attacked, we don't have to make an answer for him. Uh, sometimes we just wait for him to make that answer. All right, let's go right on to the reading, though. Mark chapter 9, verses 14 through 32. Now, um, had we had devotions on Sunday, what would we have had? We, yeah, we would have had 9, 1 through 13, which was the transfiguration. Um, um, which is important, but we're just going to go right on to Mark 9 here, 14 to 32. <coughs> oh, I see why. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Mark 9, 14. And when they came to the disciples, they saw a great crowd around them and scribes arguing with them. And immediately all the crowd, when they saw him, were greatly amazed and ran up to him and greeted him. And he asked them, what are you arguing about with them? And someone from the crowd answered him, Teacher, I brought my son to you, for he has a speaker, a speaker, a spirit that makes him mute. And whenever it seizes him, it throws him down, and he foams and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. So I asked your disciples to cast it out, and they were not able. 
And he answered them, O faithless generation, how long am I to be with you? How long am I to bear with you? Bring him to me. And they brought the boy to him, and when the spirit saw him, immediately it convulsed the boy. And he fell on the ground and rolled about, foaming at the mouth. And Jesus asked his father, How long has this been happening to him? And he said, From childhood. And it has often cast him into fire and into water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said to him, If you can, all things are possible for one who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said, I believe, help my unbelief. And when Jesus saw that the crowd came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, You mute and deaf spirit, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. And after crying out and convulsing him terribly, it came out and the boy was like a corpse, so that most of them said, He is dead. But Jesus looked took him by the hand and lifted him up and rose. He arose, and when he had entered the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could we not cast it out? And he said to them, This kind cannot be driven out by anything but prayer. They went on from there and passed through Galilee, and he did not want anyone to know, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him. And when he is killed, after three days he will rise. But they did not understand the saying, and were afraid to ask him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, you know, I've been, for the, for the time of Lent, I've been writing weekly devotional booklets um, that are at the church. In fact, both churches have, hey, Mushtaq, good morning and good evening to you. Uh, the booklets are out at the out at the congregations on a weekly basis. Of course, I put them out on Sunday, and as I said, not many people were there. But they're following these readings, um, and so I, actually, unlike normal times, I've I've read these once already, looking for a, a verse or two to talk on, to speak on, and um, <clears throat> that that so that gives me a, a point of departure on this. But I I don't remember what I wrote for this. So Jesus is coming down from the Mount of Transfiguration, and he's got uh, the disciples. We've got Peter, John, and James with him. And uh, when they when they get to the bottom of the Mount, the hill, they see the disciples arguing with scribes, scribes from Jerusalem, Jews, who are not believing in Christ, and the disciples, and then the crowd around them. And and my guess is that. We don't we don't get the text of the argument here, but there is this this man who has brought his son who's uh, possessed by an unclean spirit, and the the man, um, the man, uh, um, how do I want to say? The man is is uh, blank. Oh, the man brought his son to, to have the spirit cast out. The disciples tried and were unable to cast the spirit out. And my guess is that's the argument. Um, my guess is the disciples are being defensive of Christ and his teachings. And, and the scribes are attacking, which makes the um, idea of being deaf and mute uh, to an argument perhaps um, more valid as the psalmist says, because if something isn't happening the way that man thinks it should, um, who's at work? Well, God's at work in Christ Jesus here specifically, and perhaps that's not the purpose, and so then it doesn't happen. So why argue about it, you know? Um, the, the Spirit causes the, the young man to be mute, um, and it seizes him and throws him down. He and he foams and grinds his teeth. In another place, this, this same young man, uh, when it's uh, told to Jesus, he it throws him into the fire, into the water, and he's burned and, and nearly drowned. Um, and Jesus looks at them, 
answering them. Now, I, I don't know the I don't know the, the the direction of the them. Is it the crowd? Is it the scribes? Is it the disciples? Or is it all of them? Or is it the scribes and the faithlessness of the disciples of the of the of the scribes has affected his disciples, um, caused them to believe less, uh, to doubt um, what Jesus has taught them. Oh, oh, uh, faithless generation, how long am I to be with you? How long am I to bear with you? Bring him to me. Right? And they bring the boy to Jesus. And the and immediately the the, the demon the, the unclean spirit seizes him and he rolls on around on the ground, foaming at the mouth. And the uh, father's asked how long, in the, from childhood, he's always been like this. Um, oh, here it is. And often it casts him into fire and into water to destroy him. But if you can, if you can do anything. If you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Well, that's what Jesus says. I mean, splugnisthe, the compassion of Christ is, is greater than anything else. And Jesus says to him, if I can, if I can. This happens with a leper as well. If you can, son of David, make me clean. If I can. Well, of course he can of course he wills it. If I can, all things are possible for one who believes. Well, obviously the man believes that Jesus can, because otherwise, why would he have made the journey to bring his boy to Jesus and to his disciples? If you can. And the man says, I believe, help my unbelief. And I think that. I believe, help my unbelief. I think that is the cry of a Christian, right? Because we're surrounded by a world that, that like the scribes accusing the disciples here, that accuses us of, of believing in silly, silliness uh, or, or uh, of a God that doesn't exist. Where is your God now? Um, there's still suffering in the world. Why is there, how can there be a, a faithful God if there's still suffering in the world? Well, because... You're a bunch of sinful idiots. I believe, help my unbelief. That's, that's the cry of a Christian. I believe. I've been baptized into Christ. Faith is alive within me. I'm, I hear your word, and I'm, I'm fed with your body and blood. And I recall the waters of my baptism, which placed me into you, which is a continual thing for every day and every morning of my life. And yet, do I really believe? And I doubt. I believe, help my unbelief. I think that's it. I think that's the place to go here today. The father of the child cried out, I believe, help my unbelief. The Christian cries out, I believe, help my unbelief. It's why we go to church on Sunday. It's why we read the scriptures. It's why we pray. It's, it's why, why we need to hear the pastor give us the holy absolution. Why we need to hear the pastor preach the word aloud. It's why you come here, because you believe, but you need to be strengthened in it constantly because you're immersed in a world that does not believe. And sometimes you look at that world in wonder, do I believe? But then you hear the word and you hear the promise. And, and it's performative, right? The, the word of God is not like any other word. If you read the Bible, when you read the Bible, I won't say, yeah, when you read the Bible or when you hear it read, it's new each time. Yes, you may have heard the lesson again and again and again, but depending on where you are at, both in your, in your faith and in your thinking, and in your life, and in what you need, the Word is new to you. And you find something new in it. Something to strengthen your faith, to renew and refresh and restore you in Christ. And the Holy Spirit finds something to grab upon and thrust into your heart and say, look here, Christ, for you. 
and I believe help my unbelief. Jesus casts the spirit out um, and commands him never to enter the boy again. And the boy convulses terribly and comes out. And although the boy is like a corpse and people think he's dead, Jesus took him by the hand and lifts him up and he, he rises. And when they go into the house, his disciples ask him, why could we not cast it out? Well, this kind cannot be driven out by anything but prayer. Perhaps the spirit was mute and deaf. And so speaking to it, commanding it in the Lord's name could not cause it to do anything. But praying to God to come and do, that is what did it. And Christ is the voice of prayer. I believe, help my unbelief. And when we look to the Lord and we say, I believe, help my unbelief, he does. He strengthens us by his word, by his sacrament, by his calling, his, his called and ordained men who preach that word faithfully to us, who give it to us so that we can believe by believing, have life in Christ. Amen. Let's look to our prayer of the day. Lord Jesus Christ, our support and defense in every need, continue to preserve your church in safety, govern her by your goodness, and bless her with your peace. For you live and reign with the Father and the Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I'm going to continue with our, our uh, Lenten catechesis here on this <clears throat> Monday morning. We're Moving into the, uh, oh, hey, Connie and Robin, good morning to you guys. Uh, yeah, digging out is the right word. Our Lenten catechesis here, uh, today moving into the Lord's Prayer. So the introduction and the first petition of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, that is the introduction. So in the large catechism, we read this, no person can perfectly keep the Ten Commandments, even though he has begun to believe. The devil, with all his power, together with the world and our own flesh, resists our efforts. Therefore, nothing is more necessary than that we should continually turn toward God's ear, call upon him, and pray to him. We must pray that he would give, preserve, and increase faith in us and the fulfillment of the Ten Commandments. We pray that he would remove everything that is in our way and that opposes these, us in these matters so that we might know what and how to pray. Our Lord Jesus has taught us both the way and the words, as we shall see. Hallowed be thy name. God's name should have its proper honor. It should be valued wholly and grand as the greatest treasure and holy thing that we have. As godly children, we should pray that God's, that God's name, which is already holy in heaven, may also be and remain holy with us upon earth and in all the world. In this petition, we pray for exactly what God demands in the second commandment. We pray that his name not be taken in vain, to swear, curse, lie, deceive, and so on, but be used for God's praise and honor for whoever uses God's name for any sort of wrong profanes and desecrates this holy name. This point is easily clear if only the language is understood. To hallow means the same as to praise, magnify, and honor both in word and in deed. We should pray for ourselves who have God's word but are not thankful for it, nor live like we ought according to that word. If you pray with this, pray for this with your heart, you can be sure that it pleases God, for he will not hear anything more dear to him than that his honor and praise is exalted above everything else, and that his word is taught in its purity and is considered precious and dear. So the Lord's Prayer, the introduction and the <clears throat> and the first petition in our Lenten catechesis today. Let's continue uh, with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we are bold to pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And for ourselves and others on this Monday morning, O just and faithful God and Heavenly Father, I praise and honor you from the depths of my heart, that you may have allowed me to rest and sleep safely this past night, and that through your fatherly love you have awakened me again refreshed and healthy. It is my heartfelt prayer that you would graciously protect me together with my dear family and all Christians, from all evil and danger to the body and the soul, that every day I may be found to be in your will. I commend myself, my body and soul, heart, intellect, will, and thoughts, all my efforts, my life, and death, and everything that I am and have into your divine protection. May your holy angels be and remain by me, that no misfortune of body or soul may assail me. This grant me for the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son, my Lord. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we ask you also to be with those who have asked for our prayers, those who suffer, whether it be body, mind, or soul, illness, injury, or simply the effects of age. Pat, Lois, Anne, Brianne, Rose, Bob, Mike, Megan, Dan, Ezra, Neely, Jeremy, Ashley, John, Renee, Shazad, Holden, and all those who call upon your most holy name. Hear their prayers for the sake of your Son, who is our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ keep and preserve you today and always. Amen. Well, my friends, that brings our devotions for Monday morning to a close, even though they're a little late. Um, God's peace be with you, and uh, we'll see you back here tomorrow. Greek Tuesday, we'll see you back here tomorrow for our, our daily devotion uh, again together. If you're going out today here in the Northwoods, be careful. Um, should get better as the day goes on. But God's peace be with you. We'll see you back here on Tuesday morning.